So yeah, welcome you all here for our weekly Palo Alto Research Lab call. So we connect uh, brilliant minds, uh, brilliant engineers and entrepreneurs into a thoughtful community that is changing the world right now. So hosting today's meeting as always, Malika and myself, Ivan. And yeah, if you're first time here and want to receive the latest information about our calls, just don't hesitate to, you know, hit us up in the, uh, in the DMs or, you know, just uh, get all the links uh, from the chat box that we that we have and we'll see, we'll send uh, Google Forms right there uh, shortly. So yeah, that's we uh, that's how we usually do. And for today, we got three speakers, three amazing projects representing their pitch decks, um, getting Q&A session and, so, and stuff. So yeah, we're going to start with Mikhail Savchenko, uh, who is a CEO at Ignite, uh, sorry, Ignite.io. Uh, that's an interesting project. Then we got a, a second one, uh, which is a uh, key space studio and i believe jonathan hessing representing that one and thirdly we've got uh, uh raul mittal founder at dgen hive so yeah we've got three projects and as always for uh, uh this is for the speakers uh we got like five maybe six minutes top for uh, the pres uh, for the pitch deck and then we've got like 10 maybe roughly 12 minutes for the Q&A session so for your convenience we've add uh, we're gonna add a timer at the uh, corner so yeah just mind the timing of other speakers in line and yeah as always if you have any questions for the speakers uh, just don't hesitate to raise your hand or put your questions in the chat on zoom below so yeah you're gonna be heard uh surely and yeah don't forget to share the screen if you're sharing the screen for the presentation so yeah that's it from my side malika if you have nothing to add we can start with the first speaker mikhail please go ahead hi mike yeah uh, please take the mic <laughs> yeah hello that's everyone fun. let me share my screen okay so uh, let me introduce myself my name is mikhail and i am a ceo of inite project and in inite project we are building something we are calling a human innovation network which is essentially the uh, artificial employees platform which is uh, focusing uh, to disrupt the ideation industry in the first place uh, and uh, our idea that uh, have been a set of artificial employees uh, anyone can take uh, the idea and got through the overall pro process from the initial idea uh, to the uh, go to the market, uh, ready to go to the market project with like fund fundraising and uh, everything. And uh, as far as uh, we are um, uh, from the uh, decentralization and web free space, uh, we deeply understand uh, the problem of uh, artificial intelligence industry and uh, generative AI and large language model industry which is uh, like data privacy on the first place and uh, the uh, resources i mean it's quite complicated to for, for, for startup essentially to have the uh, exact amount of resources to to build the product and uh, to get the right results and uh, according to uh, current vision of uh, many visionaries uh, same as uh, our own uh, we are thinking that uh, to to build the uh, really useful artificial intelligence the, the decentralization is the key and uh, that is uh, the way we are going. We, 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 we took, and uh, we already made a lot of uh, quite useful things. Uh, it will be nice to, to to show you a demo, but like I, I don't, I don't think we are having a lot of time. But uh, the thing is, uh, most current. Uh, artificial intelligence solutions they are vendor dependent and the only uh, solution here is decentralization decentralization and that is something we already made uh, and uh, we are having at the moment i believe about 
20 plus something different roles which can be considered uh, as artificial employee on our platform which uh, can take your idea and to develop it from different perspe perspectives such as like uh, uh, social media management uh, digital marketing uh, legal uh, advisory and so on and so forth and uh, the, the, the most important that uh, we are doing that uh, utilizing the decentralization technologies and uh, different uh, uh, data privacy solution from web free space and uh, we are doing that uh, a lot cheaper than uh, than the solutions does such as Anthropic one and uh, open eye ones and etc the uh, our platform at the moment is fully up and running they are having hybrid subscription model i mean that it's possible to have the regular subscription with uh, stripe or uh, buy an nft and uh, use the platform uh, with uh, nft subscription as the unlock key and for nft users we uh, provide some additional uh, features and additional options because we are also focusing to convert uh, uh, web 2 users to web 3 users and here uh, data privacy problem is quite the main things to to have a look and to try to resolve uh, and uh, as i already said our platform is fully up and running uh, we are providing three months trial at the moment and uh, anyone is welcome to take a look and to try it uh, and according to uh, most uh, rewards uh, most uh, feedback that they have we are providing quite a, quite a more useful results that uh, uh, centralized solution like chargip for example and uh, uh, speaking about uh, users uh, we have in uh, 1500 uh, month active users and about 50 uh, daily active users uh, we have quite an experienced team me and my partner Andrew we are both uh, from yeah, technical technical founders in the first place and having a lot of experience with uh, an enterprise system with decentralized uh, solution with web3 and with artificial intelligence and um, speaking about uh, finance uh, we already raised uh, about half a million uh, as a grants and uh, from uh, uh, friends and family and from big brain holding and some smaller uh, vc and uh, now we are looking to raise uh, a bit less than uh, one million dollars so that is uh, like uh, the overall information in general and feel free to ask me some questions and thank you for your attention okay thanks mike so yeah let's proceed to a q a session yeah guys feel free to raise your hand or address questions in the chat and meanwhile yeah you briefly mentioned uh actually show the roadmap so uh, can you uh, elaborate on that a bit more? Like, yes. Uh, so, uh, what's so, your goal uh, for this year and next ones? Yeah. So our main goal for the next month, as soon as we are at the growing stage now, and uh, we uh, need to increase uh, the amount of our early adopters and followers significantly, we are looking at uh, the telegram open network ecosystem here on the first place so we are now working to deeply integrate uh, our uh, solution uh, inside the tone system we made some onboarding telegram bot for that and uh, we also adopt our web uh, uh, version of uh, of the platform as a, as a telegram mini app and uh, we also now building uh, some uh, gamified uh, services uh, a bit similar as uh, NotCoin, which you probably all heard about. These are like tap and go solution, but we are looking to build a bit more smart solution, which uh, will uh, get through, get our followers uh, through the uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, agent gener generated uh, educational process. So uh, uh, we will uh, force our users 
to to get through some to, to get through some educational task uh, related to Gen AI and related to our platform use cases and to get some rewards for that. Uh, we already uh, have uh, some uh, infrastructure for that uh, on top of uh, near platform ecosystem because uh, it's initially we were on the near protocol and uh, near was one of our first early supporters. We got quite a big grant from near foundation and now we are just uh, adopting uh, this onboarding and gamification solution to telegram open network ecosystem and uh, hopefully we will achieve uh, quite the uh, reasonable results here we also uh, pre-confirmed with uh, get games platform which is essentially kind of a uh, open sea analogy for uh, tonic system to uh, make an uh, initial uh, nft sales which is like uh, uh sale uh, nft trade uh for ton uh, ecosystem users and uh, we are looking to make this event in the middle of june and uh, we got a big support from get, get gems uh, uh, management and hopefully we will uh, uh, have here something about uh, like our target at least uh, 100,000k here in uh, NFT principles, which is essentially just a, a, like a discounted uh, subscription to our platform. And uh, speaking about some uh, values, uh, uh, they also resolving such problem as uh, because uh, we are having different Gen AI models under the hood, uh, open source as well as uh, the vendors APIs. So we are here considering ourselves as kind as kind of an aggregator. I mean that uh, you don't have to buy an uh, individual subscription to chat GPT and to Claude uh, to, and to something else. I don't know to mid journey on, or to uh, like stability, anything. We have more than 20 different models under the hood with uh, smart routing and you can just buy with different payment options for sure, which is uh, also useful for CIS country uh, citizens, for example, you can buy just a night subscription and have uh, uh, access to more than 20 different models. So that is also kind of the selling point for us at the moment uh, we are going to promote. So uh, long story short, uh, for next uh, several months, uh, extension and marketing our main uh, activities. And that is why we are looking for a, uh, some financial support. Okay, thanks for yeah. such extensive answer. Uh, it was very full. And yeah, we got a raised hand from Alejandro, I believe. Um, please go ahead. Yeah, hey, Mike. Uh, thank you for the presentation. In Night Team, it's really interesting. Um, I, I myself, uh, a brief rundown, I'm the senior community manager at BitGrid. Uh, we're a data science uh, competitions uh, platform similar to Kaggle, but we're, of course, pivoting over to Web3. Um, so I, I definitely see some synergies here, but I wanted to ask the question, um, is Ignite a platform that is solely for data scientists or is it really for anyone that has an AI idea? That's my first question. And secondly, um, I see on your uh, Google Play Store, uh, you can use the, I believe the idea token um, to, for AI assistance. Uh, is there a way um, that users can stake the token? Uh, could they also sell it on a, uh, on a DEX or a centralized exchange? Uh, and lastly, uh, where, would be, where would be the best way to uh, to test out the app? Uh, so uh, the best way to test the app is to... Um, to, to I, I will start from the last question, if you don't mind. So the best way to test is to uh, get to our website, which is essentially i9.io. And uh, if you will use the Starsync promo code, you will have uh, three months uh, instead of uh, 14 days trial. and. Uh, uh, speaking about uh, the target audience, we definitely consider not only the uh, scientists as our uh, users, because anyone can have an idea and the, 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 the ideas is not only about business. Uh, we also 
hardly supporting and having a lot of positive feedback from the creative class people. I mean, like in case you're having uh, some creative ideas and uh, Gen Gen AI is really good in that. I mean, they're having a lot of different uh, solutions nowadays or some uh, video production just from uh, short script description, right? And uh, like uh, artworks and music and whatever. So we are uh, hardly supporting the creative ideas for sure but beyond the creative idea you're also having the lifestyle ideas right i mean like the how to date the girl the very the very best way is also an idea and the project behind and the, or, or how to celebrate the birthday your birthday and so on and so forth how to gather my friends together and uh, one of uh, our um, uh, like side works at the moment uh, uh, on the Gen I field is hardly related to gamification that is also building on top of our platform is something which is we are calling the infinite uh, text quest i mean like you know what is text quest for sure because all the rpg games are based on the text quest because back in the in the past uh, then computers uh, didn't have any graphics uh, we were having just a text quest and uh, they're still the, the those quests they're still useful nowadays uh, because of uh, the uh, gen i explosion and uh, we are thinking to integrate uh, the text quest, uh, which uh, will be built and already built for, for some uh, early test cases on, in our platform, because you can integrate uh, uh, this infinite text uh, game quest to different uh, life uh, purposes and those purposes can be like uh, education or um, uh, mindfulness or well-being and, and, and many more and uh, well actually well-being industry is also something we are uh, looking uh, hard at because uh, one of our early hypotheses uh, which we tested uh, back uh, to 2021 was the meditation application with uh, play to earn mechanics and uh, speaking about the overall process our idea still that like you first meditate then after the meditation or like uh, or like uh, state management if you don't like the meditation term because like uh, more than uh, uh, enterprise uh, more uh, using uh, the uh, like state uh, management techniques term so you first uh, managing the right state uh, for yourself and then you having some insights and some ideas and then you are uh, pushing uh, our artificial employees to develop and extend uh, your your thoughts and so that is like the the, the, the overall uh, process uh, we are considering to implement thank you yeah i'm gonna send you a message on telegram I'm, I'm definitely interested in finding out more and seeing if there are synergies all right thanks for that so um i think malika well do you have a question or can we proceed with the next speaker because it's really time yeah let's proceed with the next one because it's time yeah it's actually uh, we've run out of time for a q a section so yeah again thanks uh mike for an amazing pitch it was a pleasure hearing you out. And Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure for me to be yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, guys, uh, let's proceed uh, with the second project for today. And we've got Jonathan. So, yeah, please go ahead. You may start uh, when it's convenient. Okay, cool. Uh, pleasure to meet everyone. Jonathan Hessing here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So, Keyspace Studio, we're focused on using emerging technology to automate engagement with on chain insights. And so, a little bit about me before I jump in um, I'm a two time co founder. Uh, this is my second company. I actually just took a small exit from my first company, selling a very small percentage of my shares so that I could have personal runway to focus on this and take as little money from the investment into the company as possible. I've been an NFT collector and crypto investor for a while. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm super excited about helping bring blockchain and automation to brands for loyalty and engagement because I started off as a brand NFT collector. I own um, collectibles and digital assets from all the brands that have launched them. And I've seen what it's done to me firsthand as a consumer. So now for the last two and a half years, I've been super excited to echo my chamber in the world of that as a builder. 
I've co-authored multiple patents in the streaming delivery space. Uh, I had a I had a podcast, a live podcast we ran for a little bit called Win with Web3. And we've been in multiple Web3 accelerators, uh, the Immutable Accelerator and the 404 DAO Accelerator. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and the reason we built key spaces, other than understanding why brands want to get into the space we're kind of entering this inflection point where there's there's radical digital transformation happening where marketers are uh, competing for attention spending seven times more to capture new eyeballs than to nurture existing ones at a time when cookies are dying this makes the case for loyalty and this makes it super important and um you know i think it's important to note here that one of the things about loyalty is it feels a lot of really transactional right now, right? You get your your nine hole punches and you get your 10th free. Whereas we want loyalty to feel more like you're on a team, like you're part of FC Barcelona. You know, sorry if there's any real Madrid fans on here, but you know, you feel like that or you feel like you're a part of a community, not just a transactional one-to-one -one relationship. And we've seen a lot of brands do this. You can see here on the right, there's, you know, brands have been launching NFTs since 2021. So, you know, I, I think you guys understand we automate engagement for communities and brands. Um, we really leverage blockchain AI, but I don't like to play buzzword bingo. So, you know, that's just what's under the hood. But we we really automate engagement with on-chain on insights. And I told you guys a little bit about myself, two-time founder, patent. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not technical, but I know how to build great teams. I know how to lead products and understand where the market's going. And um how to manage developers to build for that uh digital marketing is changing as the cost of acquisition rises and cookies die making it harder to understand your consumer and that's why loyalty is important and only going to become more and more important especially as ai continues to make uh cu customer acquisition more saturated but the difference between loyalty then and loyalty now loyalty then uh, meaning, you know, before you can uh, give ownership to your community and have all the benefits of, of this kind of technology is loyalty was very one to one, very transactional. It was just you and your little hole punch card or your mobile app and it's spend, spend none, get your 10 free. Whereas this should feel more like a community. It should feel like you own a part of it, like you are a piece of it. And I've talked with the people, you know, we actually just added the guy who put the Starbucks deal together. To our team uh we've got we've got players from different industries that are channel partners of us and they all validate that you know when you allow someone to feel like they are a part owner of the brand there's a different level of engagement that comes with that and that's what tokenizing engagement can do we've seen enterprises jump in the space from this year alone we saw visa unveil their web3 loyalty platform for 80 million partners Hugo Boss launched an omni-channel blockchain membership program just last week. Um, and the news doesn't stop. And you can see the brands here on the right. Some of the largest brands have launched NFTs. And again, as a person who started this because I saw as a consumer of brand NFTs, I saw how it made me more engaged with Nike.swoosh. I saw how it made me more engaged with Starbucks. So not only do I study the space like a hawk and live in it every day, but I started as a consumer in it. And that's what drove my passion to build. And so, but the problem with this is, um, actually I'm kind of out of order here. Let me go. The problem with what we've learned is accessibility is key. So actually I'm going to go back real quick. So that's why we built. So we saw that this, and what we learned is, you know, at this time, all these brands have to spend a lot of money using low code tools to build things and that they don't fit into a larger ecosystem. So they're one off. So what we've done is we've built a CMS platform that helps brands boost engagement by automating automating personalized experiences with emerging technology, i.e. blockchain and AI. And the way we do that um, is by making, we did an incredible job going from low code to no code. And so we've worked with different, we've worked with different kinds of brands. Um, you know, we've worked with iHeartMedia and here's some, here's some, you know, what we did with them was we showed them how how much more sponsors uh, can get engagement at in-person events. So here's some of those statistics there. We've worked with um, some of the biggest names in uh, in Atlanta, Georgia for doing, uh, they launched a, a NFT platform. And when comparing us to Manifold, we were 98% cheaper and it took them less than 30 minutes to do what we call the 4M methodology, mint, manage, market, measure. And it's the full pipeline of that that makes Keyspace Studio valuable. It's not just the minting, it's 
It's the ability to mint, put your assets on chain, manage them, use the metadata in those on chain assets to create audience segments, market to have an external con community facing hub and then manage to collect analytics. So we offered our V1 of our platform offers that full M pipeline mint manage market measure. And here's the stats from that. And we rolled that out in Q at the beginning of Q4 in 2023. And what we learned from that is three things. We did an incredible job going from low code to no code, but where we did not do a great job is going from someone who understands Web3 proficiently to someone who understands why they should leverage and why they should leverage Web3, but not the what or the how. And so what we what we learned and why we're raising for our, our 2.0 version is because of these learnings right here. So accessibility is key. The way we've solved for that is templated default setting tiles to simplify blockchain for marketers. So instead of filling out a form to mint a collection, you can pick, I want a membership pass, an attendance collectible. I want to do a gasless claim on a survey once the survey is filled out. And so you're picking options like that of default tiles as opposed to just build, minting NFTs. Integrations are pivotal. We want to work with people who can get you into the Apple wallet, DRMs, marketing automation, uh, wallet providers. We want to play with people that are already compliant and heavily credible and regarded in what they do. And they can integrate into our platform and it's a hub for managing the campaigns. And most importantly is strategic continuity. This is where a lot of brands, when they use on-chain assets, they fall off because they don't know how to answer the most important question. Okay, I did my membership pass. I did my token gated event. I did my attendance collectible for attending the token gated event. What next? What next? How do I make that into an audience segment and retarget that? What next? Nobody is solving for that. And so our interface guides brands through consistent and effect effective next steps to manage the one thing that all communities and brands that are doing this kind of techno are doing these kind of campaigns come down to, which is the roadmap. And so our interface can be looked at as like a roadmap management software. Um, and here's kind of a glimpse at it and some high level, high level points. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to double down on this. I don't want to, you know, talk your ear off about it, but here's what it looks like. And so you can see the red tiles, there are different types of collectibles and the white tiles are different types of experiences. So it provides a really seamless and accessible user interface. Brands and communities can manage their audiences. We, we have three, we're a simple SaaS. We take a, a small percentage of transaction fees and we have a usage model per token, um, as well as AI credits, which we'll roll out in year two. And that's in beta right now. But we serve as creators, we small, mid sized brands and enterprise clients. Um, these are our revenue projections. You know, I don't want to go too deep on this right now, but we've done 40K since launch. Um, you know, here's some of our accolades, uh, you know, recognized by Comcast, NBCU, Sports Tech as a top 50 out of 1500. Uh, was one of two companies selected to speak at Polygon's DevX tour. We've already raised a million. One of six companies expect, accepted in the 404 DAO. But look, I, I could keep going through these, but I think the main point is our North Star is we want to be the first to perception, to be the CMS that helps brands build engagement and loyalty using emerging technology and be the first one that can really do that in a powerful way. And that's why we're getting attraction from large brands and large players in the space. Um, this is our team, you know, a lot of qualification through from web one through web three. Uh, this is our advisory board. We've got, you know, one of four principal investors at Coinbase Ventures. We've got people who were executives in web one, in web two and web three and people who've managed multi hundred million dollar budgets on consumer and innovative tech and youth marketing. And then uh, finally, we're raising $1 million to roll out the version two of our platform, which is gonna be self-service, AI enabled, and uh, really built using the, those three lessons learned from our, our V1 deployment to really go out there and capture market share and be the first CMS to help brands in an accessible way launch on-chain loyalty programs and automate engagement. And that's Keyspace Studio. Okay, Jonathan, thanks for that. Um, and, and yeah, uh, let's proceed uh, with a Q&A section. 
And please guys raise your hand or address questions in the chat and yeah i would like to know actually uh how do you work with uh you know um, do you work with kols actually and how do you uh, develop and maintain the community around your project yeah so it's a good question um we do want to work with kols we have a creator subscription and the way it's done is we have these different tiles where you really just kind of like just like you would have a roadmap in a white paper you know the thing imagine the roadmap but there's no continuity to it right there's point a to point b to point c to point d what if that was perpetual and each point was a drag and drop default tile of either an experience or a different type of interaction touch point reward that you can give and so you can have different you can set up multiple roadmaps so i'll use a, a music artist for example if I'm an artist, I might have a roadmap for my super fans. I might have a certain roadmap for the people that attend events. I might have another roadmap for the people that stream the most music. And so I can sift through the different roadmaps as if they're different tabs on my browser and build out different roadmaps. And that's what we're about is building community and experiences on top of on-chain assets. And these on-chain assets become vehicles uh, or vessels of engagement-based metadata that you can then turn into audience segments for retargeting. And so it makes it super easy and takes away all the complexity, but offers all the value proposition of ownership, interoperability, and first party data to allow these KOLs, creators, communities, brands to be able to seamlessly manage their communities. And that's why also integrations are super important, such as you know, we, we're, we're building integrations for HubSpot, you know, things, Quest software like Tropy or Sweep Widget. Um, you know, our goal is to have as many integrations and that's where the AI plays a pivotal role. The AI plays a role in automating those integrations so you can end to end holistically manage your community. Um, but again, you know, it's kind of like layered, right? We use those integrations, we use on-chain and we use experiences but on-chain collectibles is how you manage your community around all of that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, please guys, uh, also uh, raise your hands or, you know, address questions in the chat as well. And yeah, waiting for that. Yeah, maybe Malika. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, we are expecting more questions. Maybe Jonathan, could you please explain more about your marketing strategy? Yeah, so our marketing strategy is one to many partnerships right now. So right now, because we're kind of early in the market, it's going to be enterprise deal heavy. So we have organic, um, you know, direct sales outbound, and that's we're seeing a good bit of traction from there. Recently, we just started making one to many channel partner agreements. So we're focusing on that. But again, this funding that we're raising right now is going to be to run digital ads and really kind of find that market fit for our self-service platform. So it's enterprise heavy using organic direct sales and one to many channel partners with a couple trade shows, you know, throughout the next six to 12 months. But then the bulk of the budget is going to go to running digital ads, finding that self-service niche, and then going to more trade shows that are outside of Web3 that are, that are industry specific once we identify what those key industries are for the self-service platform. Okay, thank you. Please, Raul, go ahead. Yeah, hopefully it is visible. Yeah, so I'll be presenting Dijan here. So I'll be basically uh, bumping through the our deck and the product uh, product demo. So you know how it looks like. Uh, so like, what is Dijan here? So uh, we are basically building key move infrastructure. So if you know move, it's a new VM uh, built by Facebook. Uh, so we are building like composable social graph, uh, supercharged with AI content and powered by DeFi. So I know these are like, like like a lot of buzzwords. So I'll try to break uh, break it down. Yeah. Uh, so when when I say social graph, so we know social graph create a lot of value, like Facebook, Twitter. Right now, like Farcaster is doing pretty well uh, on that side. Uh, we are creating a social graph, but we are focusing on Gen AI content. Uh, where NFTs are the wrappers for that AI content. And additionally, we have DeFi primitives. Uh, the reason we have DeFi primitives is because, like, if you look at Farcaster or Lens Protocol or any social application right now. They are not not, make, not making actual money, right? And if you look at Web three Web two social network like Facebook, Instagram, they make money from advertisement. So on our platform, what we have been able to do is like create with the DeFi incentive, like DeFi primitives, make money, use that incentives to incentivize activity on the social layer, and that unlocks unlocks the flywheel effect. Because like once you have more on the social layer, you have more DeFi activity, 
more social activity and so on so this is what uh, how our website looks like so we are currently on testnet uh, we are building it on soy network so like as well as continuing on the on our deck so we have a social graph and defi primitives like uh, like on the deck part i'll continue on the social side because like on the defi part it's nothing new so this is how our defi application looks like look like we have a amm swap so we have like if you know like if you know about amms we have v2 style passive concentrated liquidity stable so upgraded all of that uh here you can like manage your lp position and this is like the the parameters and stuff like that governance we have micro governance of pools here you can see your like liquidity breakdown your lp position will be here and the thing that we are doing different is if you look at any other defi application be it uniswap be it curve they use their like protocol fee which they are earning to buy back the governance stock and they are, then they are basically distributing that as yield among the stakers on the network we are doing it differently so we are basically collecting that yield and we convert that into uh, degen sui so we basically buy back sui token and then we liquid stake it so what that means is that on this network as on chain trading volume grows we are helping decentralizing the network i think that's really needed right now because the platform is centralized at the moment right and this is how the social application looks like so i just logged in uh here i can see different users on the platform uh i can go to someone's profile this is like their timeline how that looks like uh the ai generations that they are doing will come here uh, the nfts that they own will come here uh this is like my profile on the platform i can update like my username bio subscription pricing all of that so it feels the way, like feels very much like web2 but it is web3 right and yeah like now the thing that we are doing different is like we are focusing more on ai content uh, the reason for that is that like if you look at farcaster's core value prop right one is composability second is they are saying data ownership uh, now in the world of ai the with data ownership you, i think you should solve this data curation problem which you have with ai models because in my opinion ai models are getting open sourced the bottleneck will be data sets right and if you look at facebook uh, twitter these platforms what is happening right now is that users are paying for compute and they are putting that data freely on twitter and like facebook these platforms now these platforms have the monopoly so they can use that data to train ai models right so they have better generic ai capabilities uh, so they are like normal ai developers let's say people who are creating this kind of content they are kind of like at a disadvantage right because the problem is like these people may want to like create some niche content but they don't have the data set and many times it can take a lot of time to create this data set because like sometimes one ai model for one inference if you are doing something like a video thing it can take like 7 hours 8 hours right so what we are saying is that we have a social platform uh, here as you can launch your nft collections and you can like map your nft collection with ai model you know and here as you create content this content is not owned by a company it is available on ipfs this stuff right so then you can use that data set to make your ai model better right and as you are doing it the community who is making content on your ai model right they are doing that on chain everything is like on chain happening here and it is incentivized with token incentive so you are kind of incentivizing people for being creative like learning how to use the ai model and as they are doing it they are helping the ai developer by curating a data set which they can use to find you in the ai model right so if you know if you are into nft space if you know like pudgy penguin so think like if pudgy penguin would have launched here then community was creating memes and stuff like that on pudgy penguin that is going to enable like a video model like where you can make 10 second videos later it can be like one minute video but we are able to unlock that flywheel effect yeah this is like i can basically click here see their store here launch the nft collection uh, stuff like that and yeah like the reason we have defi primitives is because like from defi we make money on the social side and we are able to incentivize it so if you look at farcaster right now people have to pay 10 dollars to make a profile here you they don't have to do that yeah so that's a brief overview on the platform part uh, continuing in the deck yeah so in terms of the like uh, flywheels like we are trying to unlock these two main flywheels the so one is like the value created by a social graph we are capturing it as protocol owned liquidity so like if you don't know what that term means so that means like the tokens are earned owned by the protocol itself you don't have to incentivize tvl because tvl is owned by the application itself and we are, we are able to like kind of use that protocol owned liquidity to transfer value back to creators of that value who are the content creators and developers on the platform and on the ai part it's basically the dataset problem that we are trying to solve that like we are incentivizing curation of open data sets that will lead to better ai model better creative uh, creative content capability right a uh, brief background on myself so previous to this i was working at delphi digital 
So I was core contributor to Astroport and Mars Protocols. So they were pretty big on Terra in Terra network. Uh, had a five billion FDB. But if you know, like Luna USD, so the crash happened, and after the crash, I started my venture, Astra Labs. So right now, it's like fully bootstrapped. We haven't raised any external capital. Uh, now the application is ready. Right now, like I just came to Alliance Dow in New York uh, for a hackathon. Uh, right now, I'm in con- uh, for, uh, here in Austin for consensus. And I'll be in like SF next week uh, to, for the Sui head office. And yeah, like in terms of problem that we are solving, I think I have covered that briefly. Uh, but just to come again, uh, like social networks are centralized because essentially what they are doing is they capture value uh, created by the people who are the users of that network and they reserve it for shareholders of that one, right? And the data set problem is getting bigger because even if you look at like Elon Musk, the when he bought Twitter, right, he made just APIs more expensive. And now you have to pay eight dollars to use Twitter <laughs> to to even see that data, right? Because uh, data sets are the new oil. So with Dijon High, we are able to like decentralize that stack. It is composable. We have the data, but on the data we are focusing on AI IP, so community owned IP. And because it's like on Web three, we have added speculation, so people can monetize that IP in multiple ways. Yeah, we just give you more time because of the accident. So um, yeah, we can okay. expand. Uh, uh, you know, ask more questions in the Q and A section. So yeah, please guys, please and uh, address questions in the chat. And meanwhile, let me the, be the first one to ask a question. So I've been wondering, why are you building on a Sui network? Actually, uh, the reason for that is I think they have the best stack. So I have personally built on EVM, uh, uh, Cosm, Solana, right? Uh, I think Move VM is a better VM, and uh, Sui has horizontal scaling. So if you know, like Solana keeps having chain hold. The reason for that is they have vertical scaling. So what that means is you need like a more beefed up node, right? So that is always going to have give you a theoretical uh, limit in terms of throughput. Uh, I think Sui doesn't have it. Uh, and essentially like the team also is uh, has experience, right? Because they scaled Facebook. So that was the biggest like database essentially. So yeah, it's mainly tech. That's the reason. Okay, got it. And uh, yeah, have you assessed a competition ground? You know, like uh, uh, what? Um, how your project uh, stand out? Does stand out from others in the in the in the similar field? So I'll say I with DJ and Hive, I'm basically trying to reinvent the whole DeFi landscape because end of the day, Sui is a new blockchain. It is going to be difficult to like bootstrap a community, right? Uh, so and you need people to come to this platform, and that is by building something completely new. Right. So I have combined Uniswap with Farcaster. Like in brief, you can think like that. So anyone who is coming to this chain, they are going to go to Swap. But now you have the social side. And on the social side, I'm giving them AI content. Right. And let's say in terms of AI content, there are many like startups like trying to resolve resolve this problem. Uh, the problem that they have, like the fee- advantage that we have and they don't, is like I'll say Web3 speculation. Because I have experience with game theory, like AMM, this and that, the application makes organic revenue in terms of token incentive. I'm able to use that token incentive incentive to basically create a long term mode. And uh, one feature I forgot to cover in the demo is that we have tokenized advertisement. So people pay to launch an NFT collection. So we are collecting collecting that money as protocol on liquidity. And we're using that to make our economy sustainable. So I think that is something that no one can essentially replicate. And it's a new paradigm. That. All right, I heard you. Um, yeah, guys, please go ahead. Address questions to Raul. Yeah, maybe Malika, do you have something in your mind? Uh, not really. I, I I I wanted to ask about Sui, but uh, it already uh, was. Oh yeah, actually, I, I just used that one. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think if there are no questions, we can uh, conclude with that. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Alejandro, go ahead. I just seen you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I just uh, came up. So it was actually in regards to Sui. Um, Raul, do you have any plans to be interoperable in the future on different chains? Uh, the thing is, at the end of the day, it is like move stack, like move tech that we have. So we can go like to like movement chains, like Aptos and stuff like that. Initially, I'm focusing mainly on Sui because end of the day, I think like Web3 is the infrastructure that we have. The main business differentiator that we are going to have is the AI model. So what I want is like once we go on chain, we have it, but then focus on user adoption. And then I, I don't want to give them this complexity. Okay, we have one version on this chain, another on this chain. I think they shouldn't care about Web3. Okay, so yeah, thanks for that. And if there are no more questions, 
um yeah guys here i just put the telegram and email of uh, jonathan the founder of keyspace studio uh feel free to contact him or if uh, you if you if you want we can contact you yeah just text uh, us to platinum and uh yeah maybe should we finish if there are no no questions i think yeah, it's time actually one hour mark uh again i want to uh, thank uh, everybody here, every participants. It was a pleasure seeing you this week and that we've been through, you know, a lot for today. So, yeah, let's continue next week. We'll definitely keep improving, uh, keep expanding as well. And yeah, keep rolling that thing and attracting more people here. Uh, this total community and yeah, uh, gather amazing engineers, founders, with brilliant ideas that we've seen today, actually. So, yeah, I want to say thanks to Mikhail. Uh, Jonathan and Rahul for uh, presenting the pitch. Uh, uh, it was amazing. And yeah, let's see each other next week. Thanks for supporting us, staying uh, with us as well. And yeah, goodbye. Uh, best of luck and have a great one. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. And sorry again for all this thing that happened. See you next week. <laughs>